12 years and nearly a billion dollars. That's the federal investment in fighting domestic violence in Australia. And here we all are again in the wake of a crime so abhorrent it defies belief, in the same revolving door of a conversation about what must be done. The ugly political truth is this. There are no votes in domestic violence policy. DV policy is not the stuff that will unseat nor elect a government. It won't fuel a mass walkout of school kids nor prompt anyone to glue their sweep behind to a road. On any given night in Australia, though, some 50,000 women wanting to flee an abusive relationship have nowhere safe to go. Every day, people violate AVOs and are free to go about their business. Again, that's after a $700 million investment over more than a decade. We had this response during the week. It's my view that uh, we need to have a quick look at how the national plan is operating to look and see where uh, things are being done well, that perhaps more funding ought to be injected into the, those areas where things are not working well and where things uh, are, are being missed, where there are things that could be done that are not being done. We've done a number of inquiries into domestic violence and we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We understand the dimension of the problem. Not uh, a bad idea, however, to have a quick snapshot look at how we could be doing uh, some things better. Not a bad idea to look and see. Well, that's got to be the understatement of the year. How about we start with this question? Where has the $700 million gone? The reason we're in this mess is less easy to define, however, and deal with because domestic violence is, as an issue, inadvertently protected by the shame that it brings upon its victims. But before we go pointing the finger at parliamentarians, we're all also responsible because we vote and, by extension, set the agenda. How many of us have turned a blind eye when we should have intervened? We're looking for the wrong things too. We've been conditioned to notice black eyes and inexplicable bruises, to look for the car crash, not the drunk driver trying to start the engine. Hannah Clark, as explained by a close friend, was sadly no different. I work in domestic violence and I have for the last 10 years, so when she first confided in me, we spoke about the violence and, you know, for such a long time she didn't believe that she was in a DV relationship. It hadn't even crossed her mind because, as she said to me, her words, he didn't hit me. We must remove the shame in the same way that we remove the shame from conversations about mental health. We need to hold each other and our lawmakers to account. Until we do, we can spend another billion dollars and you can bet nothing will change.